Praise Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul in Northern California. It's 2.08 p.m., 4.11-2013. Been up since like 2.22 a.m. And then I think at 6.06 .06 a.m. I started to make a video, and this is now my fourth attempt. And I just feel the need to put this out, but I also need some help. This is very detailed and involved. I did make one for reference it, and turned out being 25 minutes long. It's just too long. You know, I was just uh, too tired and um, I, I, I really needed to pray longer. I mean, so let, let me just go through the details because I need some help with this, you know, from some brothers and sisters in, in the Lord. We talked about mutual prayers. And mutual faith yesterday. Now, I, I just, you know, you ever, everybody's seen Paul Bagley. We all watch the, pretty much, we see the same videos in our feed. Whether you agree with it or not, I'm not asking that, you know. Um, you know, we, we I get a lot of my news from YouTube. Probably 75% of my news comes from YouTube. It's like, you know, what happened occurred in the world or even here locally or in the nation. And he always, uh, he used to say, what, are you serious? And his new thing now is something biblical is going on. So now this is my, let me adjust this microphone. This is my fourth attempt to make this video. And that is exactly what I felt led to say. Because there's no one that can dispute this. The, that something biblical is going on. And I'm not trying to imitate him or anything. I'm not even subbed to his channel. <laughs> you you don't see me commenting on there. I just you know I'm I I I like it. I like the man. I like everybody that's trying to promote Christ on YouTube in their own different ways. Um, and you know um, I'm just saying I I don't follow him daily, but every once in a while a headline will catch my attention. This is just going nowhere fast. Help me, Jesus. But uh, when he said something biblical is going on, and he said something today, I'd have to go back and check about praying for northern uh, Nor uh, North Korea, this uh, whether they would attack us or not. Um, and Pastor Dave, he's talking about, you know, he did a thing today on the rapture and the body in Christ, a uh, uh, part one. I, I didn't watch part two, but clearly when you see everything, you know, that you see occurring in the world, you have to admit that something biblical is going on. So let me explain my day, and th I'll just because this I'm going to add this to the Ezekiel section. I have a series on here, uh, a playlist on my Ezekiel dream and vision. Just look for it under playlist at the top of my main page. And I'm going to add this to that because. When I zoned in on the Russia area and the Iraq area, those, those Iran, I mean, sorry, Iran, and said like north, south, east, west, and to the east was Iran, and to the north was Russia. Do you know that those earthquakes have not stopped hitting Iran? It's even though the media may have, mainstream media may have reported, it, uh, and, you know, that one big one, they have not stopped. They're still in the magnitude of high four levels, still hitting all over the area of Turkey. And all, I, I began to look. I don't. I don't like to come on here and have to point things out. I just. I know the Lord will lead and guide people through the Holy Spirit to to videos like the outbreaks. I did an outbreak thing in in July and August of last year when I heard the word worldwide outbreak. People thought I was crazy and insane. It doesn't look so crazy and insane uh, here in April of 2013. You know, six or seven months later, does it? No. And it's the same thing with what's going to, same thing with the Chicago Dream Series. It's going to all come out. And now this new Ezekiel series, uh, sometimes, uh, and so let, let's just go through the motions of one day because there's, this is going to, this is, like I said in the Ezekiel uh, Dream and Vision, that I don't have all the details, that more would come, more is coming. So it goes like this, and uh, I, I hope, uh, hope I didn't, Waste too much of your time already. Let me get a drink. Hold on. I'm seriously like there's this this nudging in my spirit to get this out in some fashion today. 
and maybe it may help even just one person. It's 2.13 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4.11. First of all, I woke up at exactly 2.22. Two, uh, now, did, I don't know why these times are happening like that, but the odds of that happening are, you, you know, you could win Powerball before you could just wake up at 2.22 and 3.33. I mean, exactly. Um, and what was playing, again, in, in my uh, iPod, I sleep with playing the word in audio format, was Ezekiel. It was Ezekiel 37. And then I got up and went to the restroom, walked around to see if the Lord was speaking anything, and he was. He said, go back and listen more. So I listened to Ezekiel 38 and 39, and you can pull it up in your Bible, and he's saying, you know, basically uh, prophesy about, uh, uh, and then it talks about Gog and Magog. And so I, I started doing some research, and I, uh, I just put into, to, you know, Google, Google search, you know, uh, what is Gog and Magog? Because most people will say Russia and China and stuff like that. But here's the thing. I found out that it's also mentioned in Revelation 20. Now, if you search my channel, let me just go through these steps one at a time because my wife is going to actually assist me for the first time ever with a PowerPoint presentation and give her own word of a dream she had last night. But I don't want to say anything for her. This is you know she's a part of this ministry she wants to come forward and give this and I'm excited so I did some research on the uh, that it's also in Revelation 20 uh, I have two videos on here just so you know one is on Ezekiel 38 I'll see if I can find it uh, God had given this to me last year last summer and the other one's on Revelation 20 it's buried deep in somewhere within these 600 videos and again it was last summer towards the end of like uh, probably August or September and the title of the video was something like this uh, a Revelation 20 study uh, I don't know everything and what I told people was to find yourself in the rapture whether it be pre-trib mid-trib or post-trib I challenge you to find yourself in the rapture in Revelation 20 because it's, to me, it's one of the most hardest chapters in the entire Bible to understand. And now to hear this morning that the Lord says that Revelation uh, 38 parallels the Gog and Magog of Revelation. Uh, Ezekiel 38, Gog and Magog parallels and has also mentioned Revelation 20. And I have videos of both of It's fascinating. And God has woken me up three times. See, I'm telling you, three times to this uh Ezekiel. So I, I did I did a study and the the mentioning of Messiah's first appearance as the Lamb of God. Uh, it, it has I, this is the first study I found in some we, uh, we, uh, website. It's called the Final Hour. And remember when I started this channel, it was called the Eleventh Hour. And someone said, "What is it, the Eleventh Hour, man?" I said it's the Final Hour. Not like we have one hour left, but I've explained it over and over that I feel like the clock is winding down to we're in the end of the end times, man. So it says it's mentioned 300, the details of the Messiah's first appearing as the Lamb of God, the destruction of the Jerusalem temple, and this is mentioned more than, there's 333 details, and the website is the final hour, or something, or the last hour, I was amazed. And it's a write-up about what I was listening to. So God, God just showing me stuff. Talks about Ezekiel 38, Libya and Ethiopia, and northern peoples of Gog and Magog, and uh, this this pact between Israel. And then it talks about Daniel. But then it throws in Revelation 20 there, and then and, and real quickly, it says in Ezekiel 39, 1 through 6, And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. And then I will knock the bow out of your left hand and cause the arrows to fall out of your right hand, and you shall fall upon the mountains of Israel. You and all your troops and the peoples who are with you, I will give you to the birds of prey of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. You shall fall on the open field, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. And I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in security in the coastlands, 
and then they shall know that I am the Lord. And now we're talking about the destruction of Damascus. We're talking about a lot of things here, the battle of Armageddon possibly. But when I saw that uh, raining fire is what came to my mind was a nuclear uh, nuclear weapons going off and everybody's having visions of this nuclear thing and I just don't think it's random or coincidence and I do not want to make another 25 minute video I'll just cancel it and quit if, if the Holy Spirit doesn't help me with this message and it wasn't meant to be it's already been 10 minutes so re please read Ezekiel 37 38 and 39 and go to the Lord in prayer and say what is this occurring that have to do with right now so I, I go back to bed. It's 2:22. I don't know why, and I can't answer you why it's 2:20. So I, it's just because normally I wake up at 3:33 or 3:37 every night. I mean, come on, people, every night. You don't think? Do you think I want to be up? No. I'm trying to let you know. Look, everybody's waking up around three or between three and four, and they, some people are saying it's the witching hour. I'm not a witch, and I'm for preaching Christ crucified. So it's something different than that, okay? I've already deleted five comments today, and I love the fact that I'm being persecuted for Christ Jesus. I'm being persecuted by witches, so praise God. I praise God for that, that I'm not in darkness, and that darkness ain't overtaking me, that I'm, I'm preaching Christ crucified, and, and it has nothing to do with witchcraft. Watchers on the wall are, are waking up. God's waking them up to think, why would the devil take you to the word of God? See, just exposing the lies of the devil. I ought to start a new YouTube channel just says expose the devil. Because the devil ain't never going to lead you to God's word. He don't want you in God's word. Come on now. Crazy people out on YouTube. And look, it's 2.20 right now. Crazy people out on YouTube. Help us, Lord Jesus. Really, man. The weather doesn't know what to do. So, so I don't know why I woke up at 2.22 Hearing Ezekiel 37, 38, 39. If you have any, any insight on that, let me know because it's a four hour audio book in my favorites list. Please listen to it. There's a lot of prophecy in there, it's going to come to pass. And so I woke up again to a text of a threat. I got a threat. Nah, I didn't want to focus too much on this or give it too much attention because I think they're probably listening to my videos and they might feel like, you know, uh, but the, 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 it says 6.05 a.m. I'm looking at the text. It's a local 916 number. It's, hey, it says, hey, and then uh, and talks about trying to direct me to this threatening website. And um, that's just part of my ministry. I get a lot of threats like that. It was my cell phone. That came in at 6.05. So at 6.06, I heard my cell vibrate because I came out here. So I woke up at 2.22, went, listened to Ezekiel 37, 38, 39, went back to sleep. Now here's what's interesting is at 6.06 .06 I wake up, Ezekiel 37 is playing again. Now that's impossible to happen. I'm listening to my favorites list. Four hours later it should have moved on to a, a, the next book or the next song or whatever. I'd have to go check my playlist. They go in order. On your favorite. Go look at my favorites list and see where Ezekiel is. And do the, the math from 222 to 606 and explain to me how somehow it got back to Ezekiel 37. It's impossible. So now at 606, I've been threatened. I, I, it's 222 right now. See, God has God has perfect timing. It's 222 right now, I promise you. That was meant to be. The time that this has happened three times now, where the time I ended up making a video. Who cares if it goes 30 minutes now because now the Holy Spirit's taking over and that's what I wanted, not my word. 2.22, um, this is the time that I awoke, so it's been 12 hours from the time I woke up. I have a feeling that the 12 hour time period that th this has happened three times now is significant. The 12 hour time period from the time I'm woken up to the time I'm making the message. The reason why the other ones keep failing is because it's not time yet. That I need to be on God's time and let the Holy Spirit flow and not mine. And I think rebuking that devil uh, before coming on here uh, played a big role in this message coming forward in clarity. So I'm listening to Ezekiel and it's 6.06 and my wife comes running out. 
did we not just yesterday talk the video about raging spiritual warfare I mentioned in this go watch that video it's 58 minutes long there, there's blessings in there it's all the Holy Spirit it's not me I'm not promoting my channel or anything I'm trying to encourage you I got blessed my, my wife had me play it again twice and got blessed it, it, you know so she comes running because in that video I say that I'm gonna stop asking my wife if she had a dream every night I'm not gonna ask I'm not gonna ask because when she does have a dream there's no need to ask she'll come running out and tell me that's what it says in the video well I played that video for a couple of times I, I wake up at 606 to this threat really kind of got me discouraged I think uh, you know because I'm a targeted in individual a lot of you may not know about what TIs are uh, but the people that will hear this message they'll they watch every single one of my videos they are TIs they've been targeted for uh, speaking out in the truth many of them are whistleblowers I'm a whistleblower against the state of California for now <laughs> uh, well, not, that's all I'm going to say on that um, but that's documented I don't know if you knew that or not uh, I may take it to the federal level I'm just as led by the Lord I, I'm just following the Lord not what man would say to do I could already did it I'm, I'm listening to the Lord so she comes right so that's what that threat was against me to stop helping the targeted individuals and I want you to know that that doesn't bother me at all they work through fear tactics that and uh, they just they fail they constantly fail on me for 12 years 13 years now from October of 2000 is when this targeted individual gang stalking began against me and here it is 13 years later I'm still alive I'm not dead so whatever they're doing it doesn't work against the blood of Jesus and can I get an amen it doesn't work against the blood of Jesus my father's still alive I'm still alive my wife's still alive they just empty hollow phony threats um, so anyway and the blood of Jesus and Psalms 91 protects me stand on it she comes running out at 630 this morning she says, I had a dream, I had a dream, I had a dream. I'll play it right here. And just, Wait, I think we're going to... I'm, I'm, I'm like half asleep here in this dream. So, she said, did you hear that? Let me replay that again. She says, I want this recorded for later. This is... this. She, she goes on to like, she doesn't know it. But she preached a sermon, man, for like 10 minutes on this dream. That... She's literally going to uh, take her time and put PowerPoint pictures. See, I don't know how to use PowerPoint. She's going to find PowerPoint pictures and scriptures and show this dream. This dream is so real. It has to do with me and her and the ministry and the rapture and people getting healed and counting the cost. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it's the birthing of a healing and deliverance in time ministry. Oh man, I just felt that. And uh, and counting the cost and going through persecution. There's like a car wreck. I mean, it's real. It's it's holy. It's from God, and it's gonna bless you. But she doesn't want it just to be rambling like I do. And uh, she wants. She's really good. Uh, she used to build websites, but she just doesn't have time anymore. Um. So she's going to do PowerPoint pictures, and she's going to do it, and I'm, it's not going to be me. For the first time ever, ever, 18 years of marriage, she's going to make the video. Praise God. If that's all, if we just stop right now at 20 minutes, praise God. My wife's going to do her first video on YouTube. When she said, she here, let me just talk to somebody. She said she'd never, ever do a video. She, she just, It's not for her. Just like 18 years ago, she told me she'd never be a Christian wife. She wasn't into that. Well, here she is having dreams. And <laughs> you know, see, God has other plans. You may have a plan, but God has other plans. Because I laughed when she told me that. When I met her, she said, I ain't never going to be one of these. And she didn't mean it in a, in a mean way. She was like, I'm not going to go running around saying hallelujah and, you know, lifting hands up to, to go around and, uh, uh, because, you know, we weren't in church, uh, you know, sitting in church three times a day and giving them all my money and, you know, having to lose, uh, you know, all my 
TV and all. I'm just, you know, I like, I like this, uh, you know, going out. They, they used to go play darts 18 years ago. We're talking about like 94, 95. She said, I'm never going to be that type of wife, you know, and, and uh, I married her because I, <laughs> I knew I, I was praying like I was praying three hours a day that she would be. And so if you're going, if you have a spouse that's unsaved and telling you, I ain't never going to be saved, let me tell you, you keep praying because God has other plans. I never thought in a million years that she'd be running to me at 630 in the morning telling me she had a dream from God and wants to make it herself. You just don't know. You have no idea. You really don't. Um, so anyway, I praise God for that. It's my biggest testimony I ever had, I give, is that God saved this marriage and, and he gave me my wife and, and she's a part of this ministry and now she wants to make a video. Um, at one point, the devil tried to ruin this marriage in 07 and my bags were packed by the door. Oh, don't get me start crying. Uh, don't get me start crying. Holy Spirit, help us, Lord Jesus. Someone out there, I just feel right now, someone out there, they're they're hearing this and they're they're saying, I want that, I want that. I feel it in my spirit, honestly. You can have it. I'm nobody special. You can have what God did for me, he'll do for you. Turn it around for him, Lord Jesus. Turn that marriage around in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Turn it around for him, Lord. Right now, and then they know who they are. I, I just sense it right now. Help them. Holy Spirit, lead them and guide them and bring conviction and restoration right now in the name of Jesus. Let me continue. I probably said way too much. Um, just a lot going on, you know, and we just get on here and pour our hearts out. I don't do scripted videos with notes and stuff. I get on here and pour my heart out, and I wait for the Holy Spirit to speak. So, so we're going to do this dream. It may take a couple of days, and if we're, if we're here, then it was... <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I think we'll be here in a couple of days. I, nobody knows, but uh, if we are, we'll get that uh, that dream up in some fashion. So, so we have the 2:22 a.m. and then the 6:06, which I have no idea which is the 12. I just I just thought of that. Uh, but there's a lot of a, a, a sixth part of this and a sixth part of that also mentioned in the book of Ezekiel 37, 38, 39. So I want to know, what do you think, Ezekiel 37, 38, and 39, what do you think the, the message God has given me about that, uh, waking me up to the book of Ezekiel uh, three times now to actually tell me to start a series on it? And, um, and how do you think it relates to Reve Revelation 20? Read, read Revelation 20, and uh, um, let me just close with this. I just wanted to get on here and put something out for the day to encourage you to, to hold on. Uh, the Holy Spirit also showed me this. Tomorrow is 4-12-2013. A lot of people aren't really believing this, that I had a dream and an angel showed me the number 7-3 and the numbers uh, three and seven meant war because they have this their this own closed mind where it it can only mean what Bible will says or it can only mean what you know the the it, it can only mean you know one thing. Well, if an angel showed up to you and said, "Look, and you know this, and it's been confirmed for a year now," and and he said this. And he, the numbers, do you understand? They're just symbolic. He was getting my attention. They're holy numbers. Three is the number of a trinity. Three is the on the third day Christ rose. I could go on and on and on about the number three. Uh, seven is the number of completion. Uh, it's the number of perfection. I could go on and on and on about the number seven in the Bible. But what this angel was doing was just showing me a revelation that we're, we're we're going to, in my generation, while, while I'm here on earth now, and I'm going to be 50 next year, I'll see World War III Armageddon. That's what the angel was saying, bottom line. Whether you agree with the numbers or the, whether they're signs or not is irrelevant. I know that was an angel in my dream. And no one, no one will convince me otherwise. And I'll stand before God with that dream. You understand that? And say, I, yeah. I truly believe with all my heart everything I said about that angel dream was from you. 
And yes, I told the whole world about it. Judge me uh, on that. Whether, you know, it was good or bad. And if it's wrong right now, I ask the Holy Spirit to have me stop seeing 7-3. If it's not from God, to, I'll repent and confess a thousand times because I love God. So anyway, the reason why I mention that is if you take a calculator or you take you take a piece of paper and you write down 4122013, it's going to add up to 733. Now, I've, I've said this several times and something significant always happens on days like that. See, like today, for example, you can't do it. 411, that's 4 plus a 1, 1, that would be a 6. Plus a two would be an eight. See, it doesn't. It only works for like a, a few days out of the month. And so I said, okay, look, I got this unction of a warning, and the confirmation just came in. An earthquake just hit uh, San Francisco, just an hour and a half northwest of me. Uh, it, it was a two point seven. You don't see that every day. San Francisco Bay Area, you see it. Quakes. Global incident. I'll put a link to this. Uh, and then a 4.4, 4.4, 4.4 in what's called the Owen Fracture Zone, just to name a couple, uh, in L.A., Greater L.A., 2.1, uh, Central California, San Francisco got hit again with 1.8. These are small, uh, these are small earthquakes, but there's, the area is what I'm looking at, just like Turkey. I have, in Crete, you know I have a video on here on just the, the, the island of Crete. I do, and, and it's getting hammered with earthquakes. I have a video on here on just Turkey and Nineveh and the throne of Satan, and it's getting just rocked with earthquakes. And then the latest thing on this Ezekiel thing, you don't have to go back farther than a week, was I'm zooming in on Iran. And so a lot of people thought that that was just a one-day warning earthquake from God. No, they, you, they don't know that they've continually been getting hit. Hey, this fracture zone is just south of Saudi. Give me a second here. It's south of the uh, Yemen and Oman. Oman, sorry. Yemen and Oman in the Ara uh, North Arabian Sea. You know what? This is where my aircraft carrier would come in. It's, uh, it's, it's northeast of Somalia and south of Oman. This is where a carrier would go to enter into the Persian Gulf. You know how I know that? Because I lived there for 90 days, uh, or might have been more than 90 days, uh, on the USS Ranger. I don't hide towards, I don't, I don't know how to pray to people. And, you know, someone said, don't you worry about someone coming to my house. No, I don't. I don't worry about anything. I'm very well protected here. I just don't brag and boast about it. Got questioned about that yesterday, and they just assumed that I wasn't protected. And I said, "Good, keep assuming. I want people to assume." <laughs> anyway, another long video. Let's just turn this into. It's not going to. It's 30 minutes again, and I feel like a. I know something significant was said here. Um. So let's just continue and make this a message. Everybody look at Genesis 3-7, Genesis 37-9, because they've asked me about the number 11, this 11th hour ministry book. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obedient to me. They bowed, they bowed to him. We're talking about Jacob here, right? Jacob and Joseph was 17 years old. Uh, Joseph was feeding his flock. Or I'm in Genesis 37. I don't know why I'm just flowing in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, Joseph was 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And then uh, now it, and 3 says Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Remember, man, remember when... I, I believe they were saying Israel, uh, Jacob had wrestled with the angel and demanded a blessing. And someone here just needs to do, just say, Lord, look, I'm in a covenant with you. You promised to bless me. Go read Deuteronomy 28 and see that God can command blessings on people. Verse 1 through I think it's 15. 
those are all blessings of being obedient. What I'm doing right now may not be popular. Some people say your videos are too long, you know, uh, but you know what? I'm being obedient, and there's a blessing to being obedient. That's why I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. I'm the head, not the tail, because of obedience. Because that's, we go read it. It's because of obedience to God. So, so Israel, that was, remember he said, you will no longer be called Jacob, you will be called Israel. So, so you could read it like this. Now, Jacob loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And then basically, you know what they did was they faked his death. This is, this is, and then, cause, and so he, cause he had a dream that is 11 brothers. Yes, 11 brothers bowed to him. He had several dreams and he kept having this dream. So those people that say that people that are obedient to God can't have dreams, apparently you're not reading Genesis 37. And uh, so, because they did end up bowing to him. That's the moral of that story. So the dream did come true. Um, so let me just close out with this. Well, I, you know, I was going to do a message, but we got Sunday. If if the Lord if the Lord wills, uh, I, I first of all feel led to pray for the Philippines. Uh, there's a ministry there, Joshua's ministry. I felt led to say that yesterday, and I think I put it in a comment. I just want the whole world to be praying for the area of the Philippines. You know, we have a lot of troops there. I'm not saying just pray for Philippines. It's just laid on my heart. Pray for the whole world. Pray for your family, pray for your loved ones, pray for your ministry, pray for your marriage, pray for your children. But pray a special prayer for the Philippines. They're being hit with a lot of big, significant earthquakes. Five hours ago, another 4.6. A bigger one yesterday. So, when we talk about 4-12-2013 being 7-3-3, it's already 412 over there in North Korea. And a lot of people are having dreams about missiles, including myself. So let's see what time it is over in North Korea. What I do is I just go into Google and I just put what time what time is it in North Korea? And it pops right up. And it just gives you the time. This is why my wife is going to start helping me do uh, these videos. It's 6.41 a.m. April 12th, uh, uh, 2013. It says KST, whatever the K stands for, Korean time, I don't know. So it's 6.41 a.m. So do you understand right now as I make this video, they're just now waking up. Now, it's a 733 day. I, I believe that they could launch a missile today, whether it be uh, on their time. But I also believe they could do it. It's a Friday for them. I also, they could do, tomorrow's our Friday of 412. See, they're a day ahead of us right now. So I don't, God said, you know what? Pray about this because I think they will launch. I've read as many of the three of them being locked and loaded and pointed. I, uh, God said to have people praying. Have people praying. Now, God didn't say three missiles were going to be launched and we were going to go to World War III. He just told me to have people praying. But what I want to say is I believe, and this is not, I'm not saying thus says the Lord prophecy. I believe that on April 12th, whether it be their time right now or our time tomorrow on our Friday here in the USA, uh, they will launch at least one missile. And uh, I believe that's going to be looked at very carefully as possibly uh, an act of war. And I believe it's going to, I don't I, I don't believe that in and of itself will uh, start World War III. I think the act of them doing it will, which will, will, both my dogs just suddenly growling at the front door. I believe that, that was odd. They, they will, uh, 
it, it will trigger Iran to start all this stuff and China to say these things and I'm not even sure if I, I think we'd be stupid not to shoot it down and if we don't don't shoot it down we're sending a, the wrong message that something is really wrong with our leadership but uh, if we don't shoot it down and they're claiming they're just going to shoot it over the sea then why is it aimed at all these targets like South Korea I believe that this could rain down some fire that's just my personal belief and I believe it's going to be on 412 and it's 412 over there right now Let's see if I refresh this it's 6:44 a.m. over there, Friday, April 12. I'll put a link. No, I'll put a link. Just Google what time is it in North Korea. It takes you right to the time. This is Pyong, uh, Pyongyang time right now. And I'm gonna check the latest thing. It, have you noticed the news has been real quiet on this issue? It hasn't changed. The latest thing I have it says that they're at Watchcon level two. Missiles are spotted in striking position. U.S. intelligence reveals launch zone in North North Korea. Powerful striking means on standby. I believe that's going to be uh, 412 2013, which will be 733, which will be just yet another sign. Let me see this uh, if I can get any information real quick before I close. Spy agency spot launch sites for North Korean missions. U.S. and Allied intelligence agencies have identified the launch zone of North Korea's east coast where the Pyongyang's military is set to fire a salvo of missiles, which means more than one. Uh, that risk being shot down by U.S. missile defenses in the region. See, this is just propaganda. They can't keep their story straight. First, they're not going to shoot them down. Now they are. First, it's one missile. Now it's three. Now it's a whole salvo of them. The North Korean recently began fueling two road mobile Musodon intermediate range ballistic missiles located along the east coast between the cities of Wonsan and Hambang, Kamhong, is that right? According to intelligence officials. The officials speaking on condition of anonymity, aren't they always? Why don't they just come out and say it is what it is? Then we're the USA and, you know said in addition to the 2,500 mile range, uh, they could contest test firings of several 620 mile range. So that's what they mean by salvo. In other words, they could test file a, 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 a short range, a medium range one at the same time, several of them. But what I'd seen on one website, and I forgot where it was, I think it was, a, a, let me go to it. I wanted this to end and be a 10 minute video, but what I had read was that they, they, US, South Korea on top alert as North missiles spotted in launch position. This is Depka.com. Uh, they have, they're ready for multiple launches after at least one North Korean ballistic Musadin missile was sighted, fueled, and ready to launch. So they have w at least one that's fueled and ready to go. Now, I had saw on here where they're saying that um, they have one that can go uh, all the way to us, but they're not sure whether they have the, in other words, they added a, big, a larger missile than they first originally claimed they had. You'd have to follow this story closely. And because the news has really been silent over the last couple of days on everything. U.S. lawmaker North Korea may have missile deliverable nuclear weapons. In first comment on Korean crisis, Obama calls on North to end belligerence. That was 0008-412. Okay, so that's, that's, that's new. Look at this. I'm going to put a link to this story. At 1337 on 411, that's 1337 is the time. 1337. It says Palestinian Hamas wins Syrian rebels tunneling ecstasy. 1337. I'll put a link to this.
see if it gives the new one. Yeah, it's 137. It's 37. According to the London Times, Hamas has been helping Syrian rebels in digging a tunnel beneath Damascus, Damascus in preparation for an attack on the city. Hamas is famous for its network of tunnels dug for smuggling supplies and arms from Egypt into the Gaza Strip. And I don't know why I'm getting this impression now that I talk too long and doesn't it just all sounds stupid and doesn't make sense and to to not upload it so you know, if it doesn't make sense, it's 40 minutes long, darn it. I don't know what to do, folks. I'm just going to think they're going to launch. Maybe I'll just put a comment in the box. I mean, am I really making any difference? That's what I wonder. Why am I being shown all this if I can't stop it? I, I'm, I'm challenged with this thing. You know, what would you do? What would you do if you were shown all this, that you think you're, they're going to launch one and it could possibly start, and then you're staring at 337 in the article time uh, as you tell about a dream of angels tells you starts World War Three. What would you do? Would you just keep making videos? And, I mean, what what? Does, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged with this like who does it help for me to make this video I'm really challenged with putting this information out at some point I just have to hit stop let me just close by saying to pray I think they will launch uh, on 412 and I'm excited about my wife sharing this dream I think it's going to really be uh it's a dream about being in the ministry in the, in the end times and uh, how to expect persecution. And uh, that, that's part of being in the ministry. And, and she was shown, you know, that some things you have to leave behind. And sometimes it, some certain co it costs you everything. But uh, again, I'll let her... Uh, I'll let her explain it was her dream and she's the best part of this ministry amen and I'll let her share her dream in her time God bless you just pray saints I mean I just feel like anytime something crazy I mean do you understand as a watchman on the wall sitting here feeling what I'm feeling at California where I'm sitting just I'm sitting like two hours from this and could literally just get cracked. Boom. In the twinkling of an eye, uh, God could just strike this whole, we could all just be out of power and running for safety and taking cover. Missiles could come incoming and, uh, and I sense that in my spirit and I'm thinking, what can I do? Well, Lord just said, here, take me. Holy Spirit just said, sound the alarm. You've done enough. Don't let the devil beat you up. Sound the alarm. I'm sounding the alarm that you need to pray. Sound the alarm that you need to pray and that somewhere in this 44 minutes of me talking, there's a message to somebody from the Holy Spirit to be prepared and pray and get reach your loved ones. And I'm sounding the alarm and, and go read Ezekiel 37, 38, 39 and Revelation 20 and Genesis 37 and ask the Holy Spirit how it applies to your life. And uh, I'm tired and I want to go home. And But I realized that being a watcher on the wall is not about me. It's about serving God. So what I may want may not be God's will. And I want to do God's will at all times.